I have no computer this time, but I do have a book. <clears throat> and unlike Bruce, I am going to read you something. It is the Houston phone book, and for the next five minutes, just kidding. Okay. Well, let's, let's talk about this book first. Matt, you may consider this an ancient text. I don't think it's older than you, but it, it's close. This book was written in, uh, the copyright says 1997, 1998, uh, by individuals who I guess one could consider fathers of Pearl Five, uh, Tom Christensen and Nathan Twerkington. Sorry if I butchered that name, but I have not heard of Nathan, unfortunately. Um, I'm sure he's a luminary in the history of Pearl. Definitely have heard of Tom Christensen. and He's got a lot of good uh, information out there. One of his uh, really interesting uh, write-ups is why prototypes are bad. And that's, this talk is not about that. But it's really interesting. I suggest you read it. It didn't convince me that prototypes were bad, but I did learn a lot about prototypes in Pearl 5 from it. So what I'm going to talk to you about is from chapter 13 of the Pearl Cookbook. And not only is this a Pearl Cookbook, but it is also a philosophy book. In chapter 13, Classes, Objects, and Ties, there is a philosophical aside, and I think I benefited from reading it, and I think the community would benefit from hearing it. There are a lot of classic old Pearl task texts from early on that are chock full of good information. So, I'll read it, it's not very long. In its OO programming, Pearl gives you a lot of freedom, the ability to do things more than one way. You can bless any data type to make an object, to inspect and modify classes, you didn't write, adding functions to their packages, and to use these to write tangled pits of misery, if that's what you really want to do, or not. Less flexi flexible programming languages are usually more restrictive. Many are fanatically devoted to enforced privacy, compile time checking, complex function signatures, and a smorgasbord of other features. Perl doesn't provide these things with objects because it doesn't provide them anywhere else either. Keep this in mind if you find Perl's object-oriented implementation weird. You only think it's weird because you're used to another language's philosophy. Perl's treatment of OO is perfectly sensible if you think in Perl. For every problem that you can't solve by writing Perl as though it were Java or C++, there is a native Perl solution that works perfectly. The absolutely paranoid programmer can even have complete privacy. The Perl toot, which is now split between Perl OO toot and one other one I can't recall. Man page describes how to bless closures to produce objects that are as private as those in C++ and more so. Perl's objects are not wrong, they are differently right. So I thought that was at least insightful. I'm offering no opinion on it. The last thing I wanted to mention, if you get nothing out of this talk, this particular lightning talk, please listen to Daniel's talk, lightning talk from yesterday. It was, uh, it was a very encouraging uh, five minutes where he talked about Pearl and Reiku and the community and everything that we like to do here. So thank you.